Good morning, beautiful person. Greetings from beautiful, sunny, not too hot yet, Winnipeg. And today it's Friday and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about mindset. Uh, I know I recently did a whole 14 day challenge about mindset. You can find those videos uh, either on my timeline or on my Instagram or on my YouTube. Just go find them if you want to see them. But today I'm going to be talking about um, something specific out of the last chapter of that book, Mindset by Carol Dweck. And I'm going to be talking about, she talks about kids in particular, but I think also adults do this, who are paralyzed by setbacks. As she put it, you know, people who are uh, bright and articulate and, you know, seem to have it together and then something happens that isn't what they expected or something's slipping, they think like something's slipping away or something isn't going the way they wanted and they just freeze. And um, I have done this in the past. Um, you don't have to put your hand up if you have to. <laughs> oh, hi Colin, thank you. And, um, but uh, if uh, you do recognize this possibility of something that happens to you sometimes, I have some thoughts and some help for you. So, uh, yeah, why would people be paralyzed by a setback? Like she described a situation where uh, she, when she was little, she moved to a different uh, classroom, a different school, where she didn't know how things were happening there. And then, the t you know, and it was the middle of the school year. That's the other thing that makes it really hard, poor kid. But uh, whenever the teacher would say, something like because this classroom already had established routines and protocols especially in lower elementary they tend to be super rigid and this sort of thing and everything has to be done a certain way i was so glad when my kids were out of that <laughs> but anyway like the teacher would say remember children put your name on your paper in the right place because you know that's so important but never mind um and she didn't know what the right place was on the paper because she hadn't learned it. And she says she just cried instead of putting up her hand and say, Mrs. Can, excuse me, I don't, I haven't learned that. Can you, could you please help me? She never did that. And then she tells another anecdote of, again, she could have taken some simple, simple action to solve a problem and she was just paralyzed and didn't. And the word that she uses in describing this kind of situation is helpless. Uh, some people call this learned helplessness. That is another thing. People who feel that they have no control over a situation and they feel helpless. And then when something goes wrong, they don't try and fix it. They're not solution oriented. They just freeze. And very often they will go into a victim mentality. This is not from, from the mindset book. This is just me riffing on it. Um, people go into a victim mentality and uh, just uh, blame, look for something outside themselves that they can blame. They give all of their power away. And, you know, very often circumstances are shitty. I mean, <laughs> people do experience things that they don't deserve and that are just not right and so on. But the next question is, what are you going to do about it? <clears throat> so if you are someone who is paralyzed by yeah, setbacks, by bad things happening and just, especially the way the situation is now in some parts of the world, I am so grateful here in Manitoba. We have had a streak of nine days now with no new cases of COVID-19, extremely grateful. I'm going to be able to have my daughter's high school convocation on Sunday outside and socially distanced and all the rest of it. It's not what it should have been, but the kids will walk in their gowns and get their moment in the sun. So I'm really grateful for that. But that was just an aside. But the point is, is that if you are feeling paralyzed and helpless and that the world is out of your control and that there's nothing you can do, then I want you to just stop and take a deep breath. Let's start with that. There is always something you can do. I know it seems huge and overwhelming. There's always something 
that you can do to make yourself feel better. Okay, I'm not talking about saving the world. I'm not talking about making this plague disappear. Sorry about the sun making it kind of hard to see me. But if you can hear me, that's good. Um, I want you to explore your thoughts. I want you to recognize what story it is that you're telling yourself here that's making you feel so so helpless and small and a victim of circumstance and totally without power and uh, see if you can feel a little better reach for a better better feeling thought as Gabby Bernstein puts it that's another author I've really been diving into recently maybe I'll do a series on her we'll see but uh, try and reach for a better feeling thought don't reach for the moon if you uh, are deep in debt and you tell yourself that you're a millionaire that's not going to work because you know you're not going to believe it so that's just nonsense but uh, see if you can find just a slightly better better feeling thought and really the best way to make yourself feel better in any situation is to do something for someone else because it distracts you from your own problems it helps you feel that you have some power to do good in the world so that's what I'm going to leave you with right now. Be, uh, do something good for someone else in the world, and you will find that you also feel better. Ah, sun's behind me again. Oh, well. So if, uh, if you like this sort of mindset thing, I still have that Google Doc that I'm working on from the Carol Dweck's book, Mindset. Uh, if you would like uh, my cliff notes on this book, you, you can... Uh, drop me a message, I'll send you a PDF with, uh, with my thoughts on it. And um, yeah, have a great day. Remember, I love you. If you, are, uh, if you celebrate Shabbat, then Shabbat Shalom and have a great day. Bye.